Set your butane torches to high and your expectations to low. Coming to you live from just the tip cigars in the hills of the Steel City. Get ready to get your fix. This is the Cigar Junkies Podcast. Welcome to the Cigar Junkies Podcast. A cigar show for the community by the community. A forum that talks stogies, booze, food, and anything else in cigar lifestyle. If you're looking for ratings, negativity, reviews, or an authority on all things cigars, you came to the wrong place. Whether you like what you hear or not, please join the conversation and let us know by finding us at the Cigar Junkies Facebook group or emailing us at the Cigar Junkies at gmail.com. What's, What's up, up junkies? junkies? Dude, that's that all on you. That is that all was a on you. Bit, but the, I don't know. We, we could all just wet. And, and Eric's the only one back, that got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, that was terrible. Absolutely, it was. was. I, I actually kind of liked how terrible it was. It was a no good, very bad day. Mm-hmm. Oh. I don't, uh, I don't care for these mute buttons. Um, I'm trying to step into that, but uh, what are you going to do? Well, man? you, you didn't, you, you weren't really stepping into it today. You were pushed, shoved, forced. Yeah, it was, it was. Uh, to, to be fair, like I got the live fair. up. To be fair, yeah, got the live up at nine thirty. Yes. Um, the quality of that live is is debatable. Not for but, the but it's there. You know not for I mean? the lack of you trying to screw it up by plugging stuff into the wrong ports. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've I've had trouble with that before. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. So how was your week, bud? How you doing? What are we doing? What's going on? All that jazz. How was my week? Um I I, I don't even know what happened this week versus last week anymore. Um okay. First of all, I rode my bike to the shop. I, I was told this. Yeah, uh, you weren't here. Yeah, <laughs> which is why you were told. Or I'm sorry, why you were towed. Towed. You were towed. Totally. Uh, so, so I got one of those fancy dancy electronic assist bicycles, and the most common response to that is, "Oh, what the hell? You're not going to get any exercise." You know what I mean? It's it's basic. Pe- people are like saying you're cheating, and my thought is, I can get some exercise. I can get no exercise. Yes. And what I used to get was no exercise. Um, so I've ridden it a few times with, uh, with my son on trails, which was kind of like the opposite of the reason that I bought the thing. Because yeah. I'm like, if I'm going to ride a bike, I'm not going to throw it in the back of my truck, go to a trail, ride it, and then come home and stuff. Like, it's too much work for me. But after I got mine and started riding it, my son seemed interested. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So now you're doing it anyways, yeah. yeah. But I've ridden it near the house a couple times, too. And, and listeners outside of Pittsburgh, if you've ever heard the expression uh, back and forth, both ways, uh, uphill both ways to school, that's Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like, it is, it is just uphills everywhere. Yep. And uh, there's no way I was riding a bike anywhere in my neighborhood without help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no. this helped. So I decided to come over here, and uh, I made it here relatively well. I hung out for a little bit and went home and um, made it about halfway home to the flat part. And my thoughts were just done. And I'm going, oh, man, I'm going to have to call my wife and say, hey, can you bring the van and pick me and my bike up? Because I don't got it in me to get home. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, a few brakes did it. And, and, and I actually still had plenty of charge left on the bike when I got back. But I was, like, worried because it's my first, like, real trip. And I'm like, I better save it all. Well, you don't know the fuel the level and, I, I, you know, the energy level of the battery. You're not act like... When you get in your truck, you know roughly how far you can go mm. before you have a problem. You have no idea on this thing, right? Like, you've never had an electric bike before. Right. Plus, you've never had this one. So, yeah. Right. But there, but there, is a, there, there are five bars, right? Yeah. And, like, I, I hadn't charged it the first few usage, never even dropped down the first bar. Nice. Um, and it was still in that condition whenever I left my house. But when I got up, like, the last time I looked at it, at five on my way here. And when I got up this hill and parked the bike, I looked down and it had three. And I went, well, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. I mean, that yeah. is a heck of a hill coming that way. Well, and to be honest with you, I think part of it is, too, like, it was already probably really close to that first bar being gone. Yeah. So I don't think it didn't eat two bars coming up that hill. Right. You know what I mean? But it did, it did do some damage. And so I'm like, well, I got to get down this one, up the other one, and then the whole way back. And once you get out of the park, which is about the halfway point, it's all uphill from there. It's a grade, but it's uphill. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Well, that's uh, because I was riding uh, bikes a good bit a couple of years ago. My buddy and I were 
started off by joking about the guys on the e-bikes. Then we started talking about it more and more. And we're like, you know what? These things are great. Like, they're getting people that wouldn't be out at all. You know, like, in your case, you're, you're fairly active. Like, you do stuff in your yard. Like, you do things. But okay. uh, it gets some people that wouldn't get out of their house at all to at least get out and get going. And so, like, overall, I think they're, they're a great thing. Yeah, and uh, Chris Gills has a good point. Good morning, uh, Scott Robinson. Scotty Robinson. It, and it's, you know, go twice as far as you would without oh, yeah. it. Or in my case, like I said, I wouldn't go. I've had a mountain bike for a long time. I, I don't take it out because I, it's not worth the trouble to me. I'm not going to be able to do anything with it close to home. This way I can. Um, with that being said, I did not look up the mileage between my home and here until I got back home. And I was yeah. like... Oh, yeah, that was like 9.9 miles, um, yeah. which is also the farthest I've ridden that bike since I've gotten it as well. It's yeah. probably as much as I've ridden it accumulatively until All now. Leading up to there. So, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a bit much. Oh, that's fantastic, dude. No, uh, it's it's yeah. cool that it worked out for you, too, especially, like you said, the, the freaking hill. Because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you live here, and then you come down, and you go through the park, mm-hmm. and then you come up to the shop. And it, it's probably about the same elevation, like... It's uphill both ways. <laughs> it is uphill both ways for certain. It is it is uh, it is Pittsburgh accurate, sir. Uh, it this one is a severe hill where it's like all right, get it out of the way. But yours, like coming out of the park and going up, that is just a long, long jacket, nonstop, constant. That that one would be that one hurts. Okay, so really, the worst part is is uh, you you're mixing that with the adrenaline of the possibility that you could die at any moment oh, because yeah. some of the traffic is aggressive. Yeah, especially right here. It would be okay if you were just doing a hill, right? Like, if you just had to get do this hill and you had your time to get up it as you pleased, that's yeah. fine. But when you know there is a bunch of ticked-off drivers in line behind you waiting for their opportunity to get past, and I'm staying as close to the side as I can, yeah. but, like, these shoulders are not in the bestest of conditions. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I've got to I've got to get up this as fast as I can so that I don't get run over from behind, which sounds like most of Eric's Friday nights. He said he knows you. Actually, they might have had that the opposite way, though. He, yeah. Eddie Hughes. Yeah, yeah, D- different. Uh, different. Let's not port. think about it too hard, any of yes, us. Yes, please, uh, let's not. Let's, let's uh, move on. So apart from that, I had one other activity that happened that I can think of actively on my brain. We, the Strum Junkies, played a show at uh, Liberty Pool on Thursday. Um, which was uh, super cool. It's funny because I'm setting up my gear, and I'm like 90% complete. And Nick isn't even there yet, right? But I've got... What's up, Colby? Hey, Colbs. I've got my gear set up, right? And I've just finalized. And and Ellen finally comes out. I hadn't seen her until this point. And she goes, ooh, you look like you're going to be loud. (laughs) And I'm like, I can turn this down as low as you want to. She goes, like, maybe we should set you up outside. And I'm like, maybe you should have said that a half an hour ago. It's too late now. <laughs> like, I can't, that ship I, has sailed. I, yeah, I, I, I'd love to, you know, appease you. And I, I would have no problem playing outside. But, like, it, we're, we're a little past that. would a good that. night to play outside, too. It was, it was a nice, a nice night. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really was. So we play the first song. And uh, we don't have the, the swear jar here. So I'm gonna, I'll find my way around it. Um, but uh, so we play Why the don't first we have song. the swear jar here? We're going to go back to that. Oh, because yeah, you yeah. didn't like it anymore. <laughs> that was the microphone cable. There, there's alternates. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So, any who's she comes over and she's like, after the first song, she goes, "You guys are effing amazing, nice. but you're also too effing loud." And I'm like, "Okay, cool. I'll bring it down. Let me know if this is cool or not. I'll turn it up, turn it down, whatever you need. Come tell me." And uh, nobody ever came back over. Yeah, However, yeah. I think I'm when, good then. When the first two tables in front of us finished eating and drinking and and moved on. Um, Ellen and one of the other employees of the shop we, we don't have the quarters, yeah. it's fine Ellen and one of the other employees of the shop Says, yeah, reach in there Get in there good and deep, boy <laughs> They come over and they move those tables That are now empty away from us And I thought to myself what That's a probably one. a bad sign <laughs> Like, we're priced a lot Oopsies So I bring it down a little bit more um, and, and the sad thing is, is like Shannon and uh, Nick's wife were there. A few other people we brought in, you know, a decent crowd to come see us. Um, and they're like, you know, would have loved to have those tables that were closed. But one last thing on this. The problem was I'd talk into the microphone in between songs. I'd be like trying to rile up the crowd and stuff. Nobody could hear me. 
Nobody could hear me. And <laughs> so I'm nothing. thinking, like, what are we doing here? They can't hear us. Who are we playing for? Yeah. Um, well, it turns out, uh, Shannon told me, you know, after, after the first set was over, she goes, we can't hear what you're saying when you're talking. We can tell you're talking, but we can't tell what you're saying. When you're singing and when you guys are playing, we hear it perfect. It sounds great. Yeah. I'm like, all right, that's fine. We'll get through the rest of this. I just won't talk as much. Uh, in between the, the sets and stuff. so Yeah, that, that has to be an acoustic nightmare in there. It's weird because the sound actually travels really well, but because of the shape of the building, the sound goes, but it doesn't come back. Yeah, It's like uh, radar and stealth fighters, right? Yeah. The, the radar reaches the plane, but it doesn't come it never back. never comes back. So you get no feedback, and I've got my monitor. I'm fine on that, but I can't tell what they can hear and what they can't. And whenever I talk to them, they don't talk back. So I was like, I don't know. Uh, uh, but I'm going to jump ahead to the participation trophy of the week real quick. Okay. And say a shout out to Kevin Burgess and Dina Pritchard for coming out to, uh, as they so eloquently put it, seeing the other side of Corey. The other Appreciate side. Appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out with us. That was cool. Hell yeah. So how was your week? Good. It was uh, It was all just a build up to the party. That mm. was it. It was, we, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think. Really, this week was just business as usual, and then uh, yesterday we uh, we may or may not have surprised Mister Eric over there, and uh, yeah, we, we redecorated a little bit in here. We had uh, it was still decorated when I come in. Oh yes, yes, it was a there were, there were potatoes it was a night. everywhere. Yes, there was potatoes all over the place. Uh, I heard it was good though. Somebody said they gave it a four out of five. They said they were one one toe short of a foot. Almost there. We were hoping for the best. Did you see the cake? I have not seen the cake. No. You've not seen the cake? No. Oh, it's it, there's still remnants of it. That's what left. I uh, it, Chris must be hungry because she was asking about what's on the snack table. And yeah. it was like it appears to be leftover cake and yeah. uh and uh, uh pizza yeah, the, from the, the party last night. Yeah, the night, pizza did so not weird. make it. Um the last slice was eaten at like eleven o'clock last night, so that was perfect. Um but yeah, the the cake is uh Totally amazing. Yeah, somebody was like, you ordered too much. And you were like, I told you they'd eat it. I told you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nice cake said today is the day. Mm. Um, Next the, year's cake's going to be better if I have anything oh, to do yeah. about it. Yeah, we're we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start planning now mm. for next year's. We, we're gonna, we weren't elaborate enough. Um, but yeah, so we, I mean, that was yesterday. That was we had a blast. I don't know if you enjoyed yourself or not, but everybody else had fun. I personally he said he personally was overwhelmed. And he said, thank you. We are awesome. So. But guess what? So are you. Yeah. We love you, Eric. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, man, it was just business as usual. Um, <laughs> Chris Gale said she does not understand the toe reference. Could you elaborate? Uh, Eric, can I elaborate? He used to have 10, but now he has nine. That's pretty that's, much it. That's, that's, that's yeah. it. We're yeah. we're just that simple kids. We uh Yeah, you know, it's it was yeah, that was that's really that it that's it. We we find something funny and we just hang Beat on to it. To un, it. Unlike his toe. Yes. We just hang on it's, and keep keep going, you know. It's a good way. Yeah. yeah. Well at least he doesn't have to worry about having a hangnail now or that's right. Or yeah, yeah. What I said is it must be really nice to walk around your place at the, in the in the <laughs> middle of the night and go Yeah. Huh, hey wait, that didn't oh, hurt. Didn't huh, stub didn't my smack toe. on anything. Yeah. I'm thinking about getting both of mine just removed right. for that purpose. You know what I mean? See, that's the problem. I never stub the big toe. It's always the pinky toe. Oof, that's the one I jam into the corner or something. Mm. I did often, as a as a younger man, get uh, ingrown toenails. Mm -hmm. And when you have one, you will always stub your toe on something mm -hmm. every time. And uh, you, you pull it out of there and just hope that your shoe's not full of blood. It's... Well, there's no shoe actually most of those times, but sock, whatever. Yeah, I know what you meant. Experience? No, it's not good. <laughs> Have you, you ever had the ones where you go full Peter Griffin? You can't talk. You just you just want to scream, but you can't. It's just sucking air. Yep. <sighs> and then, what's wrong? What's wrong? And you want to tell them, but you can't. You can't. There's no, no words left. Mm -mm. No. Uh, so do we want to get into this? Because yeah, it's not a very large cigars. Uh, I suppose it is possible for us to do so. Let's uh, find out what it is. It's time for the Cigar of the Week, brought to you by Leaning House Fine Cigars. The Leaning House is your destination for the ultimate cigar smoking experience. Whether you're exploring their wide selection of premium cigars, unwinding in their comfortable lounge, or enjoying live music on one of the most unique and intimate live music venues in the Berg, the house has something for everyone. 
Do you want to try the stick we're smoking today? Stop by leaninghousefinecigars.com or visit Dave in Bell Vernon or Heidi in Brownsville. Wherever you are, make the house your home for premium cigars. Make the house your home for LFD. We thought it would be fun to go back to back, and ironically, what do you? What do we? Oh, I, I don't care. Well, you're the one talking. I'm yeah, sure but I, they, they, I think everybody's much happier when I leave the camera on you. You know what I mean? Mm, Especially no. this guy. Um, we thought. All right, so here's how great and catastrophically this idea that I had failed. I was like, how cool would it be <laughs> yeah. if we did the LFD double Lajero, and one week we'll do the Digger. Because it's the most massive, like, yeah. premium cigar you could get. And then the week after, we'll do the Chisolito, which is tiny and a different shape. And we'll see how they compare to each other. Well, Sam, I think you actually missed the boat because last week, the Digger was good. It, yeah. was, it was actually really good. And I don't think it was going to be as bad as you would have remembered from your more amateur days. Yeah. That, it, what'd you do? I do have regret from that. From not, What did you do? What do you mean, what did I do? What did you do with your cigar? I gave it to RJ. You gave it to RJ, right? Yeah. So me and Jason at least had it, and I thought, well, Jason and I will be able to discuss <laughs> the differences between these two cigars next week. Not so much. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's no Jason uh-huh. here. No. Jason, uh, actually, to his credit, seemed to have been up on time and on yeah. his way in here, and he uh, ran into problems with a tranny. Yeah, it happened. Which, which you know, we've all been there. Um, yes, <laughs> I mean, what? No, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Slippage, slidage, just wouldn't shift. Couldn't get here. So now, I'm the only one that's <laughs> smoked both of them uh, between the two of us. And you've already preemptively given his away. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he can't even, like, weigh in later. He can. He'll just have to make the house his home for, for premium, premium cigars. cigars. And go over to the leaning house and, yeah. and pay for one, unfortunately. Absolutely. As one does. Uh, so... The details, though, are we are smoking the La Florida Minicana Double Lajero Chisolito. What's a Chisolito, you ask? Well, it's a 5 by 44 uh, so it's not the largest of cigars. Show off the, uh, Ooh, the size the, to the kids. Show them the little guy. Show them the itsy What's bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Uh, so Which we did last week as well, yeah. The cool thing about this is this actually uh, is the first cigar shape ever to be patented. Uh, it has a... Wedge-shaped head, just like me, just like a chisel. You don't need a cutter for this one, according to them. You can just squeeze the tip from the sides, just the tip, and you're ready to smoke, which I, is how I did it. And same here, and the draw is perfect. Yeah, like it's, it, it works it, pretty well. I mean, it was very convenient. You grab, you squeeze, you grab the piece of the cap that's there, and take it off. Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, 10-10 would, buy, would, would, would squeeze again. again. Would squeeze again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anywho, what's actually, I was thinking that I might open this cigar up later uh, with a straight cut. But due to the fact that we're smoking this on the show and I'm trying to make it last that entire time, I don't think I will. I think if you want to get your time out of this, squeeze it's the way to go. Yeah. I, you remember squeeze it? Terrible drink, fun idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the twist top mm. and then, yeah. And the little top looked like a uh, spaceship. And you just oh, yeah. Brrr, you fly it around. Fly it, around. it looked yeah, like, it uh, like the Galaga came, spaceships. Yeah, it came, <laughs> came with a little toy. Yeah. yeah. And except there would always be a little bit of juice in there, and you're like trying to get it. Oh, that, I'm so glad the camera was <laughs> oh, on you. I'm man. so glad the camera was oh, on did you. Not, <laughs> did not see that coming. Yes, that's, that's what, what she, she said. said. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, Who re- needs- I'm really glad the camera was on you for that. <laughs> Who needs Jason? I did it. As soon as I did, I looked down, down I'm like, oh, no, no. Okay. Ooh. We would have had us another oh. reel for yeah, sure. Yeah, that one would have uh, That yeah. one would have been a thing. Would have been a good time. Uh, no, nah, man. Not, nothing beats 90s marketing, man. Like, those 90s commercials were the best. Where they like, tried. Yeah, dude. Like, if you don't have a, an addictive product, like cigarettes... Whoever was selling that stuff in the 90s, those those guys could rule the world. Oh, yeah. Like, there's a good chance a lot of them are in Washington right now. You wouldn't oh. even know it. Uh, yeah, they, they managed to sell junk. You remember Skip It? Them damn Skip It commercials and crap? Like, yep. Uh, blow Pops? The Blow Pop commercials were off the chain. Yeah, those were nonstop. <laughs> Gak. Uh, Gak. I, Gak. I forgot about Gak, but it's a good one, too. Literally yeah. just slime. Yeah. Dude, the amount of products they sold us that just were, like, nothing. I miss, and my kids are never going to get to, like, truly experience the Toys R Us Christmas catalog. Ugh. 
every year you'd get it the big toy book the big that's right the big toy book and you'd just be Eric sitting there circling those, all the stuff different. you're never gonna get yes <laughs> basically i i always had a copy mm-hmm. and uh everything was circled yeah you know what i mean like every single thing until you got to like the girls section and then it was like okay maybe just a pink barbie jeep you know what just I mean? one yeah yeah yeah, and the, so that you could have your GI Joes blow it up or whatever the thing was, something like that. Uh, I, I won't disclose to you what some of my Ninja Turtles did to some uh, Barbies, some unattended Barbies. Yeah, yeah. Cowabunga! Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for one day for those Barbies to come out and join the Me Too movement, and I'm be in some big trouble, you know. <laughs> oh. So, on the doll, show us where Leonardo touched you. There was so much shell. Oh. Wait, wait. Donatello's stick was so big. <laughs> he had the biggest staff I've ever seen. I asked him to stop, but he just kept saying cowabunga. Cow- <laughs> <laughs> I bet you he was. He had all the wood. If there'd have been a pink one, you'd have liked that one better. There was there was a, uh, a girl for a while. Uh, they think there's a girl again, but she uh, she was um, no, she was blue. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, no, we, doesn't don't, need we, to happen. we don't talk about no, that. No, no, That's, I'm not saying it needs to happen. I'm no, no, no. Did, I'm just like, and I have nothing against a female Ninja Turtle. But it's just the OG ones, and that's it. Like, we'll leave it as that. The uh, the really wild thing was like the original one they did in the first reboot of the Ninja Turtles. So it was like still the 90s, and she had boobies in her shell. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because I mean, that's exactly how a turtle would would develop, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I don't know. Turtles don't lactate that I know of. So these days, I think it would just be like you'd get some eyelashes. You know what yeah. I mean? That would probably be be it. But yeah. who knows? <laughs> uh, Chris Gale said when she was a kid, Christmas catalogs were Sears pennies and service merchandise, plus a few others. Oh, Troy Harper, what's up, buddy? Good morning. Ah. yeah. Uh, so, what as we're going on the uh, as we're riding this train. I'm assuming that you have not watched the new thing. Is that accurate? The new what? The new thing. The new TV thing, the new hype thing. Oh, Fallout. Yeah. I'm on, I just, I'm like most of the way through episode two. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's we're, fair. We're working on it. That's cool. Slowly. That's cool. So I'm not going to do, we, we don't need to do any spoiler. Or what's the, 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 the show's still pretty new. So it's like excusable if you haven't started watching. However... For something that's been adapted from a video game, it's phenomenal. It is really good. I will say the guy that plays Lord Titus yeah. cracked me as soon as his helmet came off, and you saw, who, <laughs> dude, I was rolling. And that then, was how every black guy felt when Darth Vader had his helmet <laughs> taken off, and it was yeah. just the little white guy inside. You're like, Wait, you're like what? really? Come on, man. That that and uh, where he comes up and he grabs the dude by the hair and he pulls him off, and he's like, "Now run, be free, go away, whatever he says." And the guy has a little monologue. He puts him down. And he's like, you know, I'd stay at peace or something like that. And the guy's like, I'm sorry. And, and this one's going to take a quarter. But he's just like, I'm sorry. I, I, he was fucking my chickens. <laughs> <laughs> just like, I, dude, I just lost it. <laughs> like, I don't know. If I was not ready for that. Yeah. I was not prepared. Uh, you know, so what, what happens in the wasteland stays mm. in the wasteland. You know what I mean? Right. Um uh, but it makes me wonder how many copies of Fallout are being sold because oh, of the show. There, so April 25th, uh, Fallout 4 is getting a free update to new-gen consoles. So, like, mm. they haven't had one for PS5 or 4 yet. You have the game, it automatically, you oh, get it. Oh, it'll port now. Nice. Well, always ported, but they're, like, up the graphics and stuff and fixing some of the bugs, of which there are many. Um, because... Yeah, but that's part of what made the game fun. <laughs> so there's... <laughs> Yes, I was talking to somebody at work the other day. I don't remember who it was, but I was like, oh, you're a computer guy, right? So you played video games. It was, it was our systems guy. He goes, yeah. I was like, you ever play any, any like Fallout or Bethesda games? He's like, yeah. I was like, that's how I would describe our mill. We've got all that <laughs> Bethesda jank, you know what I mean? Like, it gets the job done, but you're playing it, and you're going like, all right, quality control was not really priority yep. one here. You know what I mean? Like, this is obviously held together with, like, bubble gum and, oh, yeah. and, and like, scotch tape. The end product, we will make it to the specs we need to make it to. How we get there, mm-hmm. though, is not 
it's not the most efficient method. Yeah, we're we're not going to get you there. Like you're you're going to have to walk around and uh, you're going to have to just start scrapping things and, yeah. and taking parts from one thing and putting them together yep. and make uh, it work. Because most of the, from what I understand, most of the equipment where you work hasn't been made in a very long time. Parts have not oh, been made in, in a very, very long time. Mo- most of the stuff there is significantly older than me. And it oh, looks yeah. like it's from like the old Star Trek and Frankenstein movies. You know really? what I mean? Yeah. It's like the props from that stuff. When you're like, oh, they just made this up for sci-fi. They're like, no, that stuff existed. So yeah, that, that was a thing. They, they just took <laughs> and repurposed it. Yep. It's like, who's going to know what all these flashing lights and buttons are for? Did you ever look into like, like some of the uh, like popular props, like what they were made out of I've originally. Seen some, seen um, some. I, I'm trying to think of some. lightsaber is a uh, camera flash. Yeah, you know that the flash tube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- there was a bunch of them. I went down a rabbit hole of like reading about those one night, and I just some of them were amazing. The different ways that like these guys were like, oh well, if we just paint this green, it'll work perfect for this. Right. Like, wait, uh, I was seeing that in uh, I. I you run across those on Facebook all the time, and there was a thing where they said essentially, and they redid this for some of the more recent projects just because they did it in the old days, where they painted solo cups and stacked them on top of each other to make them look like really big things in the background. You know what I mean? Like oh, these, yeah. these strange conic shapes, and nice. they're just solo cups, and they did it again, and nobody knew. So how you, would they know? You unbanded. They never know. How, you unbanded. Was there? You just got close to it, or I just was close like doing to band it? To, it is. It is a pretty big band to cigar yes. ratio, <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, there's there's a lot more band than cigar. Yeah, the band like. is the same height as it is on the digger. Yeah. <laughs> it just mm-hmm. <laughs> perspective. It looks bigger in her hand. Um, they were like, we we can uh, go steel mill out here and just use the same size band on every size of cigar. Yeah. Yes. Oh, can you imagine trying to put the digger one around this though? It'd be like it'd be like four times around. Uh, Hot dog down a hallway. So, what are your thoughts on? I've I've never had the chiselito before. I, I haven't either. Not that I've had a chisel, um, but not the not this size, and maybe not the uh, double Ahero either. It's it's hitting really well, man. Like yeah, it is. You, you kind of think maybe you're going to get hit with a little more power because it's a smaller cigar. Yeah, not at all. But here's the thing. It, it comes back to the name, right? Think about what the name is. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, double so, Ahero. So they doubled the filler. They right. Didn't, it's not the wrapper strength. Your strength is coming from the filler on this cigar, which is typically true of a Dominican product anyway, right? Whereas like a Nicaraguan or something, you might be getting a lot of strength from a wrapper. Yeah. Um, but because this is, you know, Dominican and uh, obviously doubled up on the Lajero. And that's Sumatra. Where strength and that, is. I was actually surprised. I never paid attention to what these, because I don't carry them, so I haven't read into them. Uh, I had a guy yesterday come in, and he's like, you know, do you have the LFDs? And I was like, no. He's like, oh, I like the one with this band. And I grabbed this out, and I was like, you mean like this one? He's like, yeah, that one. I'm like, I'm sorry. these." And I told him before I, I was like, I I went to grab the bag, and I was like, look, before I do this, these are for our podcast. I don't have these in stock. I'm sorry. I just just want to make sure it's the right cigar. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's the one. I was like, all right. Yeah, you can have it. I like a really strong cigar. I like a really strong cigar. I'm like. All, All right. right, so I give him Jacob's ladder. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't prepared. Yeah, too strong. He was not. He was not ready for that. He he said he's like I enjoyed it. He's like, but I want another cigar and I want something that's nothing like that. And I was like, yeah, I don't blame you. So you pulled a fanboys. Do you ever see the movie Fanboys? Mm-mm. It was about the uh, Star Trek kid or the uh, Star Wars kids uh, leading up to the Phantom Menace, and essentially like they're these these kids that were you know super original Star Wars nerds when they were kids and they grew up and grew apart. But one of them has terminal cancer. Okay. And he's not going to make it to the release of episode one. Oh. So they come up with this plan to travel across the country on a road trip and break into Skywalker Ranch so that they could see the movie <laughs> before he dies. Great movie. But the one guy owns a, um, uh, like a comic shop style thing, you know? And so these two guys come in, and they're like, hey, hey what can we help you with today? And he's like, hey, man, how much for the phaser uh, the, the phaser gun? And he's like, we don't hawk Trek here. Um, he's like, well, then why is it in the case? And he's like, so that we can spot Trekkies like you and tell you to get the F off our <laughs> land. What? 
get the F off our land, and they throw him out of the place. It's pretty good. So, like, that, that's <laughs> yeah. what you did to this guy. You were like, like you mean this one? Yeah, yeah. you can't have this. No, we, we, we just got this here just to break your heart. Yeah. This is, yeah like, we just had, like, oh, this guy? This mm-hmm. little guy? Don't worry about that little guy. <laughs> Don't worry about Don't worry that, about little, that little guy. guy. Uh, yeah. Good I job, will say, rabbit. compared to what I remember the, of the digger, this is significantly better. Uh, the digger was actually not too bad either. I yeah. like this. To, it, it's kind of funny because they're opposing problems for me. This is not enough of this cigar for me. The digger is too much of the cigar for me. They do what? make it in sizes in between. And what? Yes, that's what I'm getting at. Maybe, yeah. maybe try a Toro. You know what I mean? But uh, if, I, I should probably do that. If I point. remember right, they have like 12 or 14 mm. sizes of this. this. That's when they went crazy on Vitolas. Yeah, LFD goes deep on some of those guys. Yeah. Uh, unlike, you know, the me? few really, oh. if, unless it's popular. Yeah. If it's popular, no, you, you're getting like one size, maybe yeah. two. Um, which I'm going to ask you. On the count of three, I'm going to give you a second to think about it, but I want you to tell me your favorite LFD. We're both going to say it on the at the same time on oh, three yeah. and see if we become best friends, okay? Yep. One, two, three. Lenox. Lenox. Yeah, that's an, that's, yep. that's an easy one. Good housekeeping. Oh, yeah. That that cigar is just... It's really good. Yeah. Phenomenal. Well, let's, uh, I showed you those couple cigars that I got in that, you know, I'll figure out how to set up for, but... Uh, I don't think I've ever. I, I can't remember if I ever crossed the God of Fire off my bucket list. Or I have not. not. I don't think I have. I'm I think not, that's one of the ones we talked about very early on. Yeah. in the show. That's one of those brands that to get them, there's so much other stuff you have to buy. Are there hoops? Oh, there is. It, it's a Nintendo game. When trying I saw, to get to it. when I saw the, uh, you were like, "Hey, look in this bag," and I was like, "I don't know if I want to." Um. And you're like, I know it's new inventory. And I looked through the collection in there, and I was like, you found a workaround somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. a lot of this stuff is like, yeah. I don't think you've, you've like, met the minimum criteria. No. Like, you've not done the prerequisite no. uh, classes. Not this. even close. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I got, the, I got a pretty good collection of uh, Opus X's and God of Fire's in yesterday. And I having the problem where i really want to try the god of fire like i really want to try the god of fire yeah and you're like we have like one box yeah i only have 10 of them you know that you're going to do better uh if the box isn't full though if the what if the box isn't full you've you've come to that oh yeah yeah. remember you just gotta space them properly yeah it's it's, but yeah with mm, no even (laughs) even at my cost i'm like that's still expensive yeah (laughs) So, all right. Well, uh, speaking of prerequisites, mm-hmm. let's get into the cigar news, shall we? Because the first one on here is a little bit uh, interesting. I think it's uh, something that's going to excite me. Anyways, I don't, I'm, I don't know. Let's see if we could do. I'm afraid I'll mess up the music later if I do this. Uh-oh. All right. The cigar news today brought to you by the Cigar Junkies podcast and the Strum Junkies. Uh, speaking of which. We had a show scheduled. I got to get on there and update the uh, Facebook uh, photo, but uh, we had to cancel the Main Street Tavern that oh, we no. just picked up two days ago. We yeah. just picked up this show, and now we're not going to do it. What happened? Uh, Nick is up at camp. They had just sold their old camper up at camp, and they were supposed to get a new one delivered this weekend, and, and they show. are rescheduling to deliver next oh, weekend, so no. he has to be up there again, yeah. So this is actually some pretty cool... Uh, pretty cool news it, to me and probably to the rest of the, the junkies out there. Uh, at the 2024 Premium Cigar Association trade show, I saw the launch of the Cigar Academy. Did you hear about this? Yes. This is a project founded by Ricardo Carrioni and Thomas Grison. The Cigar Academy delivers a cigar educational platform and opportunity for certification. Uh, for uh, I'm sorry, I got no, distracted good. by the fact that the camera wasn't on me. I didn't want to get yelled at. Well, <laughs> I was letting it go for the first one, yeah. and then I was going to tag you on it for the next one. For all cigar lovers seeking authentic knowledge about the cultural heritage and artisanal tradition of the cigar world, the Cigar Academy 
stands as the ultimate source, said Ricardo Carrioni, co-founder, which, I mean, I don't know why we had to repeat that. It was just in the previous sentence. Ultimately, education is our strongest weapon against misled regulations and to help us protect and nurture the true cigar culture of our forefathers. Uh, the educational platform delivers a curriculum of courses through an online learning management system. Uh, this, in turn, can lead to formal certifications from uh, leading cigar makers. The Cigar Academy will offer three levels of certification. Currently is offering a level one award certification. Uh, the Cigar Academy says this is geared toward newcomers and those experienced in the world of cigars. Uh, the online curriculum provides an exploration of cigar making history, processes, and techniques. Level two and three certifications are planned for the future. They will build upon foundation of level one delving deeper into the history, processes, and varieties of tobaccos. Uh, the curriculum incorporates in-person workshops, events, and hands-on training at factories and farms. That's not level one. That's like level two. Yeah. Up. So um, it's pretty cool, though. So I did look it up, and course number one has a price tag of 250 associated with it, which isn't really as, isn't bad for a certain. Isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, you know, for any type of online curriculum. Uh, so I think it's pretty cool. I think it's interesting. I don't, you know, was, I think they said it, it would take one to three months to complete depending on the speed of which you go through it. Um, but I'm interested enough to see if, you know, in the future I could get just the tip cigars to sponsor my education. We, we could get I can't get them to do it for me. So you're pretty <laughs> much SOL, bud. Uh, I, I was hoping that I could get a grant or uh, a grant a scholarship of some kind. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, no, I, I stuff like this I love. It's, it's a, cool. A structured system to actually like learn about it is phenomenal because the the amount of just junk that I learned trying to learn basic stuff. Oh, sure. Like you just get so like, you can learn everything that this course has probably through YouTube, no problem. Good luck figuring out which ones you you should and shouldn't watch though. Which ones are right? Which ones aren't? That, yep. That's what intrigues me, right, is yeah. I think a lot of this information is going to be repeat knowledge for me. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is if it's standardized the way you hope it would be, it would take, like, the guesswork out of am I right or wrong about this because of the type of way that we're pretty much all educated. Right. So you're like, all right, this is all definitely coming from experts, supposedly. So Yeah, and that's – I don't know who all was involved in this. I I had heard about It'd it. I knew, research. I knew it was a thing. Um, but I didn't look into it at all to see who all was part of it. Um, there's definitely some names that if I don't see in there, I'll be disappointed. But, you know, because at the very least, like, you need a Carlito or a um, Padron or Perdomo in there. Yes. Just to have that. So it's not one-sided, and you know that you well, have some some OGs in there that are giving yeah, you good and, information. And there's there's a dozen guys like that. I just named those two. But, like... It gives the credibility to it. Sure. You, Not you, to mention the fact that there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yes. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, like, they're all going to have their own way. But if you're standardizing the knowledge base, you need guys that have, first off, the diversity of knowledge. You can't have one dude sitting there at a keyboard typing up an entire course. That's terrible. Well, not to mention the fact that I think that you're on to something in terms of, like, you need somebody... You need enough enough of the respected members of the culture to uh, at least agree and say, okay, this maybe I yeah. wasn't integral in the creation of this process, but yes, this is accurate information, right? Yeah. Because you can have any scientist can come out there and like you could be a lifelong studied uh, intellectual person, but if it's only through their their perspective, yep, it, you could still be severely misguided, right? Yeah. It's like like the shops, right? You look from shop to shop. Every one of us has different clientele, has to run in a different way. There's certain things we all have to do, mm -hmm. but beyond those those key items, and that's where, you know, the key items of what people need to learn of, you know, it, the different regions, that's something you need to understand if you want to, you know, understand blending at all. You have to know the different regions and know, first off, the key notes of it, and then, you know, and something that I really want to learn and just haven't figured out a good path to actually do it efficiently is like the different seed varietals in those regions. How do they react to different things? Cause you know, you could take Nicaraguan, uh, Corojo seed to Honduras and grow it. And it's not going to taste the same at all. Sure. But 
is that first generation of it going to taste more similar? Like how long does it take before you get the diminishing taste? It, like there's a lot of nerd out stuff on that that I would love to know. I just haven't figured out the best way to learn. It's intriguing, so. right? And and I'm going to have to do some more research and maybe make some contacts because this is like the first post high school um, educational system that I feel like my uh, lack of intelligence and physical capability wouldn't hinder me from getting a scholarship for. <laughs> it's like, hey, I might qualify. Yeah. I'm at I the might, top of the class. I might be able to do a thing. <laughs> well, then the other thing I'd be curious about is the, like this versus Tobacconist University. Like, what's the overlap? Is it is there overlap? What There would have to be some. Yeah. Uh, but probably a little bit different because you're gearing towards finding something for a customer versus making something for an industry. Which Tobacconist University does get into that side of it. That's not the one that gets talked about as much, but like you have that as well as a path from them. And I mean, there's, there's apprenticeship rec, um, mandates and stuff like that through Tobacconist University that you have to hit before you can get, you know, master blender and stuff like that. Sure. So, um, so this wasn't a super busy week, but fortunately we did have that to talk about uh, in some depth. Uh, it was kind of interesting and exciting. Uh, most of the, the new cigar news uh, had come out, leading up to the PCA trade show, right? So we already kind of delivered you all the news on what's new and exciting and interesting um, with uh, an exception, I believe, if we haven't covered, uh, if we did cover this before, I'm sorry for repeating, but as far as I could tell, we haven't. Tatuaje Cigars showcased two cigars commemorating Pete Johnson's 50th birthday. The cigars were rolled back in December 2019 at El Rey de los Habanos using extra aged tobaccos. Year later, Pete Johnson decided to foil wrap the cigars in the 50 count cabinets. However, the price of the cigars, combined with the fact that a few cabinets would be made available, led Johnson to move the cigars to 10 count boxes in September 23. Since Tatuaje stamps dates when the cigars are packaged into boxes, the final packaging will feature both the 2020 and 2023 date stamps. The Tatuaje 50th comes in two sizes, Robusto Especial, which is a 5.5 by 52, and a Toro Especial, which is a 6.5 by 52. The blend uses a Corojo 99 shade grown wrapper over Nicaraguan tobacco. Finalized price is not set yet, but uh, <clears throat> tighten up your belts because they're anticipated to be in the 50 to 50 rain Oof. so yeah if got a fire isn't on your list of uh, available to your budget yeah mm, good luck you're not on gonna that be grabbing one. that one either yeah probably not so yeah the got a fires have always intrigued me because that's a that's a carlito cigar yeah um, and then one of the cool things is the opus pack that i got uh it's the yellow it's a variety of six cigars, different year Shameless stamps. Shameless plug. But as you uh, as you open that up, it's you open the box that comes in, and then you open the box that that comes in, or they open the next box, and then in the bottom of there, there's a book. And I mean, like, you should have did got, got one some of, mass to it. One of those really popular uh, unboxing videos on YouTube. You could have um, got some. I'm sure it's been done shop. a thousand times. Um, yeah, but that doesn't stop them from true. doing it. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, the Fuente story, uh, is the book that's in it. And then you take the, uh, the box that sits on top of that out and you open it up and then in there is yet another box in a leather pouch. And that's the actual box, uh, box for the cigars, like the actual dress box for it. Like, Hey guys, if you just put that in one box and sent you it to us, not- maybe you could cut like. 35 percent off of that yeah. price it's <laughs> there is some serious packaging to that one um, sometimes i feel like they do that just to justify their prices yeah. because nowadays everything's so into packaging yeah if we had unboxing videos in the 80s it would have been in the back of the parents car as soon as we got out of hills or Ames, yep. and it would have been this it would have been whoosh, yep. here it is now yeah. all the pieces are scattered throughout the car i'm never going to see those nunchucks again well then kids kept eating the damn pieces so now the the packaging is so impossible to get apart. You have to have a freaking chainsaw just to crack open your new Barbie. Uh, yeah, I haven't had that experience recently, but I will say that we we had our struggles back in the day too, kids. Oh um, yeah. If if you think that you have problems nowadays, our Ninja Turtles, all their weapons were the same color oh, and they were dude. all brown. Yeah. And you had to disassemble them yourself from this weird snap connective pack. tissue. Uh, which probably gets Jason all excited because he's into those, what was it, Warhammer? Yeah. The way he was describing it to me, 
every character from that, every weapon, everything all comes in those strips. And you yeah, have to pull like, them out, pop them all apart, paint well, everything. I'm like, you are, that is too much. That was a big deal back in the day. It was like the uh, the model kits you would get, all the pieces were held together like, yeah. like that, right? And um, just because they were like, it's too expensive to mold each one of these pieces separately, we'll mold them all as one and you could take them apart. Yep. The sad part about that is you never, ever had a straight sword. No, there's always, always that one little freaking sharp <laughs> corner on it. No, but they would like always have a little bit of a bend to yeah. them. It'd be like a rainbow yeah. sword, you know? Like there was always a straight. problem with something. Yeah. I had my pride and joy as a kid was I had the Power Rangers that had the heads that flipped. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, that is <laughs> every Ross is going crazy, right? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I wasn't the, I wasn't big on the Ninja Tur or the uh the Power Ranger figures, but I did I did appreciate some of the Zords. Yeah. Which which just saying it out loud, what a stupid name that oh, is. Yeah, it's terrible. It? <laughs> it's horrific. It's horrible. Um but like essentially what was it? Was what was the guy that was the odd man out that wasn't always in there? He was the green in the White oh, Ranger. Yeah, yeah. Was it? It wasn't Tommy. I can't remember. Or Jason, it. one or the other. Oh, did he die? Oh, yeah. oh, that's terrible. Um, yeah, unfortunate. That dude was actually like a legit martial arts expert and stuff yeah. too. Um, but like he he always got the cool ones mostly oh, yeah. because they were always standalone. Did the so saber tooth tiger? Yeah, he had the tiger sword. He had the falcon sword. And the best one of all time, the guy had to play the flute through his dagger, through a, a mask. With and no I had that parable, dagger. Uh, for the dragon's sword, yep. which shot missiles out of its fingertips. <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere else. <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, yeah. By far the best. It made zero sense. Yeah. But it was great. I mean, and the best part is it was absolutely just a Voltron knockoff. <laughs> Dude, that whole show was a knockoff. Did you ever watch, like, the... The, the shows that made us, those kind of documentaries on no. Netflix. They did one on the Power Rangers, and the guy that essentially came up with this essentially just took a show that was already in Japan, and um, they just did the the parts that the kids weren't dressed up in the suits for. They put an American, uh, and then they, they put their own dialogue and stuff over <laughs> the other parts. So, like, the show cost them nothing to make. <laughs> and then he got the rights to the, like the toys and stuff, and like essentially this guy just came up with the cheapest, cheapest way to ever make a show in history and just build an empire on it. It was crazy. Oh, that's there's so many shows that are just adapted from other places, like uh, Shameless. Did you ever watch that? My wife did. It was one of those shows that always just like I, I never really watched it, but it made me really uncomfortable. That's the point. I know. <laughs> And, and eventually I did take to, like, The Office, um, which also... Yep, but it was a one. different version of that. That yeah. was, like, an awkward, uncomfortable... The, shameless, to me, seems like a this-is-not-okay kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. Just some really messed up oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. I I think that show could have been a lot better if they did, like, a, a R-rated version of that. on it. Like, if that show had come out a little later on a streaming service or shameless? something. Yeah. I I think it was as close as it, I, but it, but it, it was on real TV, right? Wasn't it like FX? Yeah, it was or FX. Like, yeah, they're usually the ones that are like scratching the, the surface, right on the edge. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that show is horrible. Mm -hmm. I I never made it all the way through. I think I made it to like season three of it, um, because it is it's a lot. Yeah, it's it's a lot, but. No, it just, you know, that was an adaptation. The Office, uh, you know, you talk about Power Rangers was. I'm sure there's so many others. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's uh, even like Mario. Mario wasn't supposed to be Mario. It was supposed to be, um, what was the game? It, don well, it came from. Uh, he, the character came from Donkey Kong. But, right. like, the game itself was a different character, and they just changed it to this, to Mario. Yeah. And I, there's a whole backstory to that one, too. Oh, yeah. Lots of stuff for that, for sure. Yeah, so much of... Uh, our, our childhood was just absolutely stolen stuff. And yet you hear people talking now like, oh, they never come up with fresh ideas. And they didn't come up with fresh ideas when we were kids either. We just didn't know better. Uh, uh, Shannon says yes. the worst part is when the woman carved a swastika I into a little boy's head. That's yeah. pretty messed up. Because yeah. he's going to juvie. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I've seen it clips It was terrible. That. Yeah, they're like, yeah, it won't mess with you. It's yeah. just going to help you survive. Like, yeah, it, yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh. It's a, it's interesting. And the bad part is, like you said, that's the worst part. And I'm like, yeah, 
There's some others that were really close, <laughs> like every episode. <laughs> yeah, it seems it seems a little icky. Uh, mm. So let's go back to the current show uh, yeah. and go back to Fallout. Yes, because man, so many little things just on that first episode that if you've played this game, you're like, wow, like they're doing this right. Like we got rad roaches right away. Like we got power armor right away. She we looted got... a corpse. That dude. That was my thing. I was sitting there going like the the big battle ended and yeah. she, they're they're all about to walk away and I'm like no 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 she bends you down. cannot <laughs> walk past a corpse without like this is the the, the fallout like that's this the is game the that's the like, point there are no resources you have to take everything that you can get and then you're gonna craft it into a pipe rifle yeah later, which something. you see yeah and uh, just the excitement of seeing like the new Coca Colas and and uh, me like explaining to Shannon like oh no the 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 uh, pop caps, bottle caps are, yeah, are what they use for currency in this game and stuff. And like the fact that I had, uh, so one of my favorite parts about Fallout Four is that you could create your own custom settlement and you could mod or use various sorts of of ways to cheat around like the limits of how big you could make stuff and right. so forth, or like be able to make things that you're not relatively supposed to be. And I made some. Um, my settlement was incredible, but like the the system could not generate it from one side to the other. So right. like you'd walk forward and things would just kind of appear pop, as you would. Yeah. Pop, yeah. Um, but so in my main building, I had like a bedroom area and it had a secret door that you had to walk over in a certain place. And when you did this door would slide open, it was like behind a bookshelf. And when you opened it up, I had shelves on the wall and there was all of these, um, uh, mini nukes lined up on it and then there was like a pallet sized floor uh area on the floor just stacked with old world currency that's not worth anything <laughs> but there's like millions of dollars worth of money that does is no good to anybody there um i don't know i just thought it was cool but the time that it took to do all that stuff because you'd have to pick up each piece and place it and turn it just right to stack it and the worst part is is like god forbid your settlement got attacked and there was an explosion on the other side of that wall where you bumped into something. Next time you'd come in, it'd just be laying all It'll over the fall, place in disarray. The and you'd be like, yeah. yay. Uh. Sometimes I like actually went, screw this. I'm going back to my old, my, my previous save. <laughs> just because it's like, it's going to take the, the, the last two hours I spent out doing things and coming back here was less time than it took me for me to stack all the stuff up properly in the first place. So games like that never... Like I was never that guy at all. Like I, I like the, like, playing like World of Warcraft. I hated, hated the vast majority of that game. But I liked the arena PvP content. But you had to play all this other stuff, just to be able to get the gear to be able to actually play that. And I, I, I hated grinding. So, what the best part about Fallout Four is you had the option. You did. You had to like do very minimal to accomplish a certain goal or whatever, and that was it. They never made you build a settlement to any extreme or anything. Like, you had to do this little part, and that was it. If you wanted to walk away from it, you could. You could spend your whole game trying to build your settlement. You could go out and explore the stories. Yeah. You could go do anything that you really wanted to do. And um, for me, the joy of it was going like, okay, it spread the game out. Yeah. Because you would go do some missions and come back, and take your resources and build something. And, like, you ever hear of water farming in that game? No. So what I would do is you would, the first settlement, there was a, a creek that ran through it. And so you could set up water pumps. And they would, every day, every 24 hours, you couldn't just sit there and sleep. You had to leave and come back. Um, but you would, the next day, you'd come back and you'd have, like, five bottles of clean water that were generated from this pump. Then you'd go out and sell them to people outside of your settlements that had limited money. You can only get like 500 caps from them. And then you could come back or you could buy materials or whatever, come back, build another one and increase it until eventually my whole creek was full of these gigantic water pumps. And I'd be selling thousands and thousands of credits or, or uh, caps uh. worth of water every day to then buy material to put back into my place. Yeah. But it was cool because you'd be like, OK, like this is getting a little bit old. You go out and then you do missions for, you know, four or five hours or like the next time you played or whatever. And then you'd come back and you'd be like, hey, I got all these resources. Now I'm going to go back and do this again. It kept you from 
getting too bored with either thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, cool. those big open world concept games, which there's plenty of now, uh, That that is the cool part. It just never, never did it for me at all. It just because it's not competitive. It's okay. You know, like PVE was never my thing. I was never a player versus environment guy for those that didn't know. So you mentioned this arena thing and that kind of drew me back to something that I did in my settlement. Right. Was there was a certain point where you could actually set traps for creatures and raiders and stuff like that. And so I for some reason they would just work even if there was no way for them people to get to them. Right. The stuff okay. would just end up getting caught in there. You'd look and you'd be like, oh, the trap door is closed. There's a thing in there. So inside of my settlement, I built this huge arena. And around it, I had like all these turrets and stuff, but I'd have them all powered off on a main switch. And then what you would do is you would let everything get captured. And then there was a master off switch that you could hit for the trap power. And so you'd hit the button, and all the things would come out and fight each other. And you could just sit up and spectate. You set up gladiatorial games yes. in your settlement. Yes, until they would all start to attack you, and then you'd just turn on your turrets, and they'd mode down. they go crazy. Yeah. It was like the master kill switch. So, um, yeah, great times. But well, uh, So one of the things I was explaining to Shannon about this game is like, listen, this is not you. You're not a joystick person. But if they made this, if, if they ever were like, okay, we're, we've got all this success with it. Let's convert this to a VR game where you could play it in VR. Oh, just the same old version of That'd be terrifying. The, it would be up her alley for sure because she's not good with the controls, but she likes to do this stuff with her mm-hmm. hands. But the coolest part about those games, and this goes back to um, what was the the one that was popular, the old schoolest one, uh, the, the okay. not Fallout, the other. Skyrim? Yeah, Skyrim was like you would find these notes laying around and you'd think it'd be random. You'd read them and then you'd find another piece of that story and another piece of that story and they'd turn into a quest and you'd see all these messed up things going around. I'm like, Shane, you don't understand. Like, You'd go into a random vault and you'd log into a terminal and see all these like messed up things that these people were writing in these their diaries of being like, something's weird, something's going on, like, I keep feeling dizzy and sick, and, like, this person got mad for no reason, then they disappeared. And then you'd log into the overseer's terminal and be like, okay, we did this experiment. Like, we started to cut down the food supply, or we started to increase the amount of noxious gas that we're pumping in to see how these people would react. And I'm like, like, this is, it's messed up, man, like, what they're doing. And then, like, you start to see elements of that stuff in the show, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not too that. So a couple guys were watching it here, yeah. so I have an idea of what's to come on that. But I did my best not to pay attention to it at all. Yeah, they yeah. put a lot of effort into this show. Like they put money behind it. Yeah, and and like like it's genuinely. It's not one of these things that the people that that are really familiar are watching. Like this is bull crap. That's not how it goes. Like they're staying pretty accurate to yeah. the source material, which is super cool. Well, and that's, it's nice to see, but, like, people get too judgmental on that. Like, there's a lot of times, like, guys, the game can't be adapted. Like, you know, if, if they made, you know, like Mortal Kombat, they tried. Mm. But the game is literally there's person, no story. person, yeah. done. You know, it's, people get a little too sensitive on it, especially when you get something that has the cult following of, like, a Skyrim or, a, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or, you know, like, Somebody's going to be angry no matter what. But, sure. But I think that, I mean, the best all-time video game that's converted to a movie has got to be Double Dragons. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it was what, terrible. What about Street Fighter? Uh, no, nah, dude, at least that, they threw, like, money at, like, the cast. So, like, the acting was good. The writing was just terrible. Dude, dude, was is that something we talked about on here? Or was that something Oh, you know what? Somewhere? I think we've done this before. No, huh? no, no. Like, this was oh. very recent that I saw a thing that was the um, the main bad guy in Bison. Was, like, wasn't that, like, a, a yeah, Gomez? I, yeah. And, and like, this great actor. Yeah. And, like, everyone Every, was really surprised. Yeah, we talked about it here. Took, was it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, he was dying. Yeah, why did he do it? Yeah, yeah he knew he was on his way out. Yeah, His kids loved crazy. the game. yeah. Like that's yeah, cause we got into this because of Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah. That's what happened. We, we went down the Jean Claude Van Damme rabbit hole. Yeah, um, you'll have that. It'll happen from time to time. But here's the thing: is like, 
for those people that are like, this is not what happened in the game or in this material, in the book. And it's like, okay, but you know all that stuff like the back of your hand. Did you really want to just see the exact same thing you'd already knew? Because then you yeah. might get bored with there's it. There's already a storyline I mean? that you've experienced. Right. There's not. There's no surprises there for you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's, there's, it, there's no anticipation. My favorite book that I've read was the Dark Tower series. So it's actually seven or eight books. Um, and by far my favorite. What was it? The Dark Tower okay. by Stephen King. Okay. Um, and then they did the movie. And the first time I watched the movie, I was just angry with it. But then I heard an explanation of why the story, like, because that movie, the characters are the characters from the books, but, like, that's it. Yeah. That, that's, that, you know, everything in it is from the books, but, like, the story doesn't match. And there's a good reason why um, that all took place like that and i was like oh oh and i rewatched it i'm like okay this is awesome now the only yeah. thing that was terrible about that was matthew mcconaughey was the wrong person to play the 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 bad guy yeah he just does not fit the bill at all okay that's fair so uh here's the thing nerds are gonna be mad i mean it's just what they do you look at the people that love star wars and hate george lucas like he gave you the thing that you love and then you, you just crap him. on him yeah. and, and non-stop like, like literally gave him such a sense of anxiety that he was just like, here, Disney, you take it. Yeah, you, you, you have these guys. Like, I don't feel like dealing with them anymore. Here, yeah. give me all the money. I'll give all the money to charity. And then you can deal with these nerds. Yeah, I, I'm not a big Avatar guy, but I was I don't know, on a reel or something the other day. I guess they filmed Avatar 2, 3, and 4 all at the same time to okay. avoid the... Uh, the aging? What did they call it, though? The Stranger Things effect. Where, like... The audience between season, people or what? No, Stranger Things from the show. What because the kids had growth uh, spurts. Because they were all, like, that prime yeah. age for, like, growth spurts. And they're like, yeah, this happened yesterday, and that kid was three years younger. Um, you know, stuff like that. But it... it you, you talk about Lucas and um, Cameron. Like, they just... They do such elaborate stuff that... Look, man, crap on him while you want, but they create some cool stuff. Like, like I said, I'm not even a fan of Avatar, but I respect what he did with it. Yeah. Well, you listen to like interviews with Mark Hamill, and they're like, "What they did to these poor people, like the fans, what they did to the actors, like uh, uh, Hayden Christensen, like that guy quit acting after the prequels because it was so <laughs> they were bad. so bad. And now, like, it's so nice to see him be redeemed by the Obi Wan yeah. uh, series, and and like all this love he's getting, and you could see in his face, like, oh my god, they finally like. I don't even think it's like he needed them to love him. It's just like, just that. Okay, I can kind of let this go. All this hate that I've gotten all these years. Now these people love me, and it's like I can let that go. Yeah. But the little kid that played Anakin in the first movie, yeah, like they terrorized that yeah. little boy. And and Mark Hamill is like he was a ten year old kid yeah, that just did exactly alone. what George told him to do. Yeah, and I don't think his performances were bad as as bad as Hayden Christensen's. But but Mark's like man like. This, he writes clunky dialogue. Man. If like, you want any proof of that, look at Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, it's like, and then Jar Jar thing. Everyone gets so mad about, and George is like, these these movies are made for kids, and you're attached to your childhood version of it. But now you're not that kid anymore. This yeah. is no longer being made for you. Yeah, it never stood a chance. Right with the nerds. No, because this is this is not going to be your Star Wars. This is the Star Wars for the kids. It always has been. You just didn't know it because you were looking through it through a different from set the, of eyes at the time. From the design uh, Like, the people direction. get mad about the Ewoks. Like, how can you not love an army of teddy bears, you know, <laughs> toppling the <laughs> Imperial War Machine? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. So, I mine is kicked. Um, it, it is definitely I'm, I'm a shorter sure. smoke. Yes. Um, but it I overall, mean, fantastic to be, cigar. To be fair. To be fair, to be hour and twenty minutes, and you know that's about where we both end up at. I, I'm just kind of holding on to my nick, yeah, and puffing on it for the rest of the show. But what was your take? Uh, really good. I need to smoke it again. Yeah, uh, and just, that's that's a good place to be, especially if, yeah. from the guy selling the cigars. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> honestly the the my coffee just like terrorized it. It was yeah. it is not a coffee cigar at all. 
Uh, that you would should fire whoever made that coffee. Yeah, right. Uh, that <laughs> that with a an Ajo tequila would be fantastic. I like tequila. Like a, with like a dark, like thicker tequila would be amazing. Um, yeah, it, uh, Seneca just said he's halfway through and it's really ramping up. That's something I noticed too. The first half was flavorful and good, and I was like, man, there's none of that, none of Aggressive. that kick that I remember at all. And then about the halfway mark, it it just starts turning it up. So I like I like where it's turning up to. Though. Yeah, it's not unpleasant or overwhelming. Oh it's, yeah, it's way more aggressive on the retro now. Yes, and uh, I I enjoyed that a lot. But yeah. again, with the coffee, it was just the wrong choice for me. Uh, like with the monster or something sweeter like that, it's got to be this really is, really good. This is good for sure. Yeah, the, one of the most disappointing things about today, like we're the junkies, man. We just we just go with it. We figure it out, right? We're we're always trying to overcome some sort There's of always something some sort of horrible problem. It, um, Some self-induced horrible problem. Sure. Let's clarify. We always do this to ourselves. I don't know if another. it's self-induced, but like we can't you really, plugged it into the wrong spot. You can't bud. blame anybody else. Is kind yeah. of it. It's not like oh man, like you have to. You know, it's like ah man, you stumble a little bit. Yeah. You know. Um, but one of the worst things was I was going like, okay, Jason's not here. We'll deal with it. It'd be a lot easier to deal with it if I could just do my tequila at the beginning <laughs> of the show. Oh, are you working like, today? Roll. Yeah, we're 3 to 11. Yeah, not um, so much. Well, even if I wasn't, I probably would be since Jason can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So at least I was supposed to work. Yeah. Right? I don't have to worry about picking up his shift because he can't get there. Um, but uh, it, it would have been probably helpful. But I think this has been a good show so far. I, no, I've I, liked it. I enjoyed it's, it very it's, much. It's nice the... to do the old school ones every once in a while. But it's funny. So, like, we're, we're in this weird place of trying to be organized where we are just basically incapable. Like... We're, we're trying to put shackles on the chaos of this show by going, hey, let's get organized and figure stuff out. Yeah. Right. And I've been doing the last couple of days, I've been going back through some of the older material so that we can uh, catalog. Hey, what have we smoked? Who yeah. have we had on the show? What what happened here and there? And just, just so that we could look back at it and, and like have reference a history <laughs> and reference. So we're not repeating at least cigars and things like that. But the amount of times that I did have to, like, open up one of the old shows, like the audio, and just kind of listen and go, what was the Cigar of the Week or something like that, because it wasn't in the title of the show, and and listen to immediately, you know, the, oh, there were technical problems. And I didn't yeah. necessarily hear them, but we'd be talking about, like, yeah. the difficulty in starting up the show, right? Um, one of them in particular was, like, uh, w- another Zoom disaster with Veritas. Yeah. <laughs> right? And uh, it's funny because back in those days, it was just me. There was no Jason. Yeah. And Sam would just be chilling there on the other side. He's like, listen, man, I can't I can't complain because all yeah. I got to do is sit here and wait to talk. Yep. And he'd be like, you know, there's a problem, and you find it, and you fix it, and we go. Yeah. I, I, never, get, I never gave you crap for it because yeah. I'm not helping. Until like, now. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, dude, you plugged it in. Like, if it's you fair. plugged it into the wrong USB port, yeah. it'd be one thing. But you it's plugged fair. the USB into an Ethernet port, bud. Well, the biggest problem that we have here is that there are wrong USB ports. Yes. And, and yeah. so you're going, okay, what goes where? And you're moving stuff. And, like, at least I plugged the audio cable into the right port. But, yeah, there's there's something to be said for, like, I might just see if in one of my boxes, because I used to have to build Cat5 cables and yeah. stuff. So like, see if I just have an end I could put in there, because I never use that that yeah. jack. I actually might have one wi- back in the closet. Wi-Fi all the time, right? So it's like I just put it in there, and you won't have to worry just about leave accidentally. it there. It's like I just throw a butt plug in there, and you won't have to worry it, about it, yeah. going in the wrong hole. Yeah, you know? problem solved. <laughs> just block the entrance. <laughs> you, Eric had lots of comments when you did that. Eyebrows so, went up. There was a lot of excitement. It's so it's, grateful for these headphones right now. And the best part is, know. as soon as you said that, Ross's head went down because he knew it was coming. He was like, oh, here we go. You, you had to do it. Oh, Sounds I, like Ross has been violated by uh, Eric's uh, yeah, maybe, uh, piece of information that I learned yesterday that I never You, never you have to know to it, so now everyone else yes, has to know 100%. it, Yes, 100%. Did you know there's different colored ball gags? I, I've just seen the red. Right. Yeah. But then I come to find out there's a variety of colors. And I was more shocked by the fact that I never contemplated that there could be different colors than I was the fact that there are different colors. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to one-up you. Like you said, you. I know it now. Everybody you're, has to. Yeah. I'm going to one-up you. See, you, you're not as 
into the reels as a lot of people are. But I'm sure there has to be like a you have like two minutes of downtime and you're going to scroll for there. A now you've seen it, too. Now it's stuck in your head, too. So have you seen this new trend of you'll just be flipping through and it'll be like, OK, there's these girls are doing this thing. And it's a gymnastic thing yeah. or a yoga. And all of a sudden there's the little blinky light that they got. the tail yeah, Oh, light. yeah. And you're like, oh, there's oh a rain- they, yep, yep. That, that lady's got a yep. rainbow colored taillight. Yep. So I'm like, all right, this is kind of fun. Until then the other day I'm watching, like I'm scrolling through, there's a video and there's all these people doing these like wild trampoline jumps or whatever. And the girls do it. It's like, oh, nice. And then the guy does it and he's got the blinky taillight. And I'm like, oh, nah, you just ruined it. Yeah, that, that, that <laughs> whole trend is dead now. That's That one's over. Well, I don't know if it's dead. I just think that the other people own it now. Too. Yeah. It's like, we didn't want to share that, man. Like, that was just for us, damn it. Now, <laughs> the alternative folks. Mm-hmm. There, there should be there should uh, be the other guys like Facebook. If you really want to help us, like don't censor everybody. Just like allow it to tailor toward your orientation or whatever. Just be I like, like be like, I'd like to see the girls with the taillights, but the boys not so much. Or like maybe you want both or maybe you want one or the other. But can we just like, you know, like maybe. Maybe even the, the coffee pot's telling you to stop, bud. <laughs> well, maybe the Republicans and Democrats wouldn't get so angry at each other if you could just be like, "No, just show me the right wing crap, or just show me the left wing crap." Then they would. Oh, have that goes down a whole rabbit hole. Oh, it's, no, a, it's yeah. A, it's more like a rabbit canyon. Yeah, it yeah. yes, rabbit. It, canyon. It's like a rabbit, Eric. That sounds. Um, that sounds like. <laughs> the next whiskey or uh, cigar craze, <laughs> the rabbit canyon. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the disappointment on Ross's face when I said that. He just turned away. Canyon arrow. <laughs> oh, okay, man. so can I, I I'm gonna be like I'm 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 gonna air air out a little bit of one of my uh, default character pornices that I have here. Wow, like two it's funny because the show went from like an hour and five minutes flew. And then I look like an hour and nine minutes to an hour and oh that's why I'm like this felt like it's been a long time between an hour and nine minutes and an hour and eleven minutes, and then it just jumped up to an hour and twenty seven. That minutes. would make sense. I'm then. like, okay, now now I'm not going crazy. Okay, character defect of Corey, not always great with names. Ross, I I forget it every time, and I want to call him Russ, and I even put him one of those like idiomatic things in my brain, where I'm like, no, from friends, from friends, he's gonna be like Ross from friends. And so I still somehow today I blanked on it again, so I couldn't like go up and like really talk to him because I'm like, so the one I'm gonna mess I, it up. The one that I used pivot, for, oh, pivot, pivot, pivot. That's how I'm gonna try to. That's how I'm gonna walk it into my brain. So I went with Robin Hood Men in Tights. Ooh, his last name's Abbott. Hey Abbott. And then I learned that and remembered that, and I was like, okay, uh, now I just got to tie a first name to it. I'm good. See, I would end up calling him Roger. Roger. Roger Abbott. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go, bud. You've got a following. Did you want it? <laughs> if you ever have a son, I dare you to name him Roger. Please do. Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, do we want to wrap it? I think we're at that point, bud, because no sea god is no fun. Yeah, let's actually, um, I'm going to try to pay attention to not skipping the things that I normally yeah. do. What we normally do is we flip to the back page and just go straight to the I bottom. Just, I, did you notice I've been holding my hand on it to, let, <laughs> to force myself to remember so we didn't do that again? Well, we already did the participation trophy of the week, but again, another nod to uh, Kevin and Dina for showing. Um, but we'll, we can skip over the little memo I have at the top because that was for yeah. content to get us to 130, and it was... Intended as if we ever need that. Well, that was intended to be for uh, last week's show when RJ was here. Yeah, because it was like, oh, okay, you guys went to a hockey game. Like that yeah. could be some content if we need uh, uh, something sports related. Yeah, so- something just yeah. to focus on, like yeah. right instead of going all over the place. Uh, welcome to the group, RJ Haley. Uh, if you had uh, cuddled with Jason last night, he'd be here right now. Yeah, and snuggle time. Michael Jelinek. That's a that's a name. That's it. Only two. You got anything to add before I go into the end here? No, I think that, I think that about covers. Oh, um, cool. next week we've got Luciano is going. Uh, Luciano Morales is going to be here. Okay, and um, we're smoking Luciano, but we don't. We know don't know which one what, yet. So. Yeah, he's going to be joining us uh, on the Super show, and then mystery one, part two. Dun dun dun. 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 
and then one to five he'll be here with uh liberty pool so that's i'm really excited for that event from everything that uh the rep told me about it the nerd in me is losing his mind so hell yeah well uh bear in mind that you can find us in our favorite place the cigar junkies.com there you can find our newest content whether it be on youtube uh, spotify all those happy things please make sure you guys like subscribe and share on every platform that helps us out a lot. Some of the people here have been slacking apparently because they don't know what the finger trap is yet. And that's really sad. You know what I mean? We got to we got to yes. get on that. We got to do something about that cuz there's there's material out there. We're we're putting it out there for you guys and if you're not here in person, you're just like skipping over it, which yeah. is disappointing. And really you're only hurting yourself. Yeah. You know what I you're mean? You're missing out on all the fun. Uh, you can also go to justatipcigars.com and you can find out what's going on over here at the shop. Please support Cigars for Warriors, Cigar Rights of America. Their links can be found in every episode description every week on every platform. We put that in there for you guys to find it. Like uh, Sam said, uh, you can uh, you can see us smoke a Luciano next week, every morning, Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Salud. Yeah.